in Raven Chacon's The Journey of the Horizontal People, he employs many, many different techniques, string techniques that we haven't done, and also many, many different colors, which are just beautiful, really, really beautiful. He also, it, it has a sense of serenity and profoundness about the piece. And even the very, if you look at the very first bar, he has five beats, but yet he has accents on rest, which is very confusing to just a regular you know, musician. Now, how can you accent a rest? But what he determined was, it's basically, I think, to focus everybody, to put everybody in that same space to begin the, the piece on the second bar. So um, it makes sure that everybody's in the same place, and then we can start the piece in a really beautiful way. So it's the, the accent in different parts. What we do is we do a small motion, so that like mine is the very first beat, so I go, just a small motion, and then someone yeah. else does the second one, the third, and fourth, and we all come together on the fifth one and come into the, the second bar together. It's, it's almost like I play the very second one, and I'm, I'm involved with Hank's emptiness on the first one, and he's kind of starting, and then I'm kind of getting ready, and then there's the fifth one, and then we all... So let's try to, we, David plays on the fourth beat, so, but he's mm -hmm. not here, so we'll pretend that he has done it. So, shall we try it? This is the cello part for the third bar. I have a very unusual technique, pizzicato technique. So as written in the part, I put my finger down on C around or around C, doesn't have to be exact. And then I pluck the string with my pinky, but at the same time I pluck the string with my right hand here. So together it sounds like this. This technique, you can also put the note down with your thumb instead of the first finger. And preferably, it's not quite on C, but somewhere around C, so you can hear both those different pitches. So it sounds like a double step. So with the thumb, it sounds like this. In bar four, five, and six, um, Raven has asked us to scratch the bow. Uh, you see the dark, uh, it looks like a crescendo mark, but it's actually to make it go to a, 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 a scratch. But he also says to keep it piano. And so that's really hard to do, because you think, you know, if you look at it visually, you think you want to get loud because it's getting darker and darker. But it is actually staying the same, but you're just changing from a note to a scratch. John, could you demonstrate for us what that is? And demonstrate what you would do normally if you saw something like you think it would be really loud. That's not what she has intended. He wants it to be remain really calm, but with a new kind of cool sound. Also on mine in bar one, two, three, the fourth bar, he not only he also adds a uh, vibrato gliss. <laughs> In bar nine of the second violin part, um, he asks us to draw circles on the on the 
the um, string with the bow. And he does it in two different speeds. He does it in a medium speed and a faster speed. And so John, could you dem demonstrate also what a circular, circular bow is? So he's actually using, going from Ponticello to Soltosto, but in a real gradual way. So just doing a circle, which is very interesting because you're going through all these different uh, colors in, in the bow. And could you play your part there? Bar 11 has this one technique that's very, very interesting. He's written a line on a note, and basically he wants the notation to, or the notes to be played, and you can choose whatever note you want in that line. But the, the interesting part is the accent and how he has a little um, swiggle next to it, meaning a, um, an accent with a, with a stress and a bend to the pitch. So this is the accented note with the gliss. Let's just do the first couple bars together. Notice how we did the accent. I mean, we really brought that out. But we can choose whatever note we want. It doesn't have to be the same. So it's always going to be different. You can do it on the fly. The cello pizzicato in bar 14 is a lot like uh, bar 3, except it's double step. So with my left hand, I'm rolling up. And with my right hand, I'm rolling down. So at the same time, it sounds like this. There are two different techniques employed in 24, and they're, they're throughout the piece, but it's, it's, uh, you can see it clearly in 24 in the viola part. There is the Z uh, that's on a note, and that is an a jagged stuttered bow using about two inches of bow. So you're doing something like this. So it's kind of irregular. It, it, you try to be haphazard as much as possible. The next technique is called a twist bow. And basically all you're doing is you're moving from hair to colegno and back. And you're just rolling the bow with your, your right hand. Do you see how I do that? And so to employ, I'll play 24 using both techniques. So major 25 <laughs> employs a very interesting technique. You're glissing up one string, but then you're tapping gently on the lower string at the harmonic. And then you end up with a harmonic together at the end. Try that, John. In the 30s, um, both the second violin and the viola have this uh, to play behind on the, behind the nut, way back here. And this is very hard to do, to play exactly, because you have to play something the very next bar. So being the violist, it's really hard to get that through. So John has suggested I play a little higher. And the trouble is to play a double stop. And that's, that's what that sounds like. And then you have to move ahead. If you could do it very easily like this, but you have to play later or, or right after that. So it's, you have to do it this way, I believe, in order to make it, make it uh, correct. So in 62, uh, we have a different technique going on. We have a harmonic 
with a fast glissando going down. John, demonstrate for us. Good. Now, in contrast, play a solid note with the same idea. With the vibrato? With the vibrato. You see, it's a little, it's a better color with the, with the harmonic. This is the cello harmonic effect in measure 78. Um, the double steps are major third apart and both notes are lightly touched, not pushed down. And as you go up the fingerboard, the distance stays the same. So.